Okay, so now we're trying to talk about how, where to get started with this outline, this crazy outline. How do I do this? Okay, first of all, the first part, there's three parts. If you look at your sheet, I ask you to print out the informative outline sheet to look at to go along with this lecture. So there's three big pieces of information. There's the introduction, there's the body, and there's the conclusion. So all of your research goes where? It goes in the body. So when we're writing our speech, you start with the body first. And I remember the first time I heard that thing, but, but it's true because you have to write the body to know what your speech is going to be about before you can introduce it in the introduction. So always write the body of a speech or paper really first. So how do we get started? So you're going to go do some research and you're going to learn about your topic. You're going to understand it. You're going to gather all this data, all this research. And you can think about each fact or each idea, each piece of information is like one little piece of information. And we're going to organize that information. So sometimes people write each piece of information on a post-it or a note card so that they can organize it physically that way. Um, I like to write all of my information down on a piece of paper and then like maybe use different highlighters or underline all of this or circle all of that. But the idea is you break all your research down into little pieces of information and then you're going to make sort of piles or groups. So if I'm, I've gathered all my data, I'm going to put it into different piles. Let's take an example. <clears throat> Um, what would be a good example? Um, if you want to talk about, it's raining right now, so weather and patterns comes to mind, and I'm looking at sewing stuff, so sewing stuff comes to mind. Um, how about food? Let's talk about food. So if we talk about all of the different restaurants on Galveston Island, right? We would go and we'd find out because we know a lot of them, but then there's going to be some that we don't know about, right? Um, so I go do my research and I find all that information. So each restaurant um, is a topic and then there's going to be supporting information about each restaurant. So if I'm telling someone about all the restaurants on Galveston Island, I'm going to have all these. How can I group them? How? How can I group them? Your book talks about different ways to group things. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind is you could make piles about location. You could make a West End pile. You could make a, a historic district pile and a Midtown pile, maybe, right? You could make a Sea Isle pile. That's four. Okay, so um, maybe that puts like one, maybe that puts like most of your restaurants in one category and not so much in the other, so that's not really a good way. So maybe, it might be a good way though, but let's say it's not, we need another way. You could categorize it, how could you group it? How could you group it? You could group it by um, type of food, right? You could say, here's all the um, Asian food, and here's all the Mexican food, and here's all the like traditional American cuisine and here's all the seafood so that's four categories that might work out to give us four kind of more or less equal groups um, maybe not so what else could we categorize it we could categorize it by price here's the really expensive the moderate and here's the cheap food so you just kind of look at your data and figure out how to categorize it so for your informative topics um, another way might just be like big chunks of information. So let's see, uh, what if I was giving a topic about, um, uh, Galveston Island school systems. So I could talk to you about grade schools and high schools and middle schools, or I could talk to you about, um, if I were giving a speech about topics that are coming up right now for the school district, I could talk about rezoning and um, testing and something else. So you just group that information. Okay, so we have our piles. Now within those piles, there's going to be further grouping. So 
let's say I have my three piles. I'm going to put these one and two away here and I'm just going to deal with this pile, number three, or you know, number one or whatever. You're going to pick one pile and deal with that or one group of information. Um, so within that group, there's going to be a main idea. This whole group is about what? So that's one of the parts of your body. So your body, however many uh, A, B, C, D, however many pieces of your body that you have is however many groups that you have. So I take this group, this is A, and I, the main idea of this, that's A in my outline. So when I look at all my pieces of information, there's really kind of three categories in this group. So that would be one, two, three under A, right? And then there's some stuff about one, there's some supporting details that would be little A and B under one. So we move from general to specific, right? So let's go back to the restaurants in Galveston. If I had um, divided it by area, East End, Historic, and Midtown, then I could say for my Historic District, or yeah, let's do historic district. So for a historic district, I could say there are several great restaurants to eat in the historic district. Let's, okay, so um, like then I could say the mosquito is one. That would be number one, right? And then I could tell you things about the mosquito. That would be A, B, C, D. So I went from general to specific to more specific. A sandwich at the mosquito is very specific, right? So our outline moves from the general to the specific. So you write your body first and then your introduction and your conclusion. And when you have looked at all of your data, you can say, what is my speech really about? And that's when you write your thesis statement. And so we're gonna move on to the introduction.